Welcome. In front of me, I have the brand new Samsung Galaxy S8 Ultra, and today I will show you a couple of tweaks and tricks you can do on this device. So, uh, obviously, uh, this will basically contain majority of the things that you can find in settings and a couple uh, things that come preloaded with the device that you might not be aware. So, I just jump straight to it and begin with the side panel, which has been just a staple, I guess, for Samsung devices ever since like. Uh, the curved edges uh, on the phones but obviously it stayed I changed a little bit over the time and right now they well, give you the panel but it's fairly limited by default only having the several applications visible right here and they removed the pages that were previously accessible uh, by default uh, before we had like three pages to utilize right now we got only the apps but when you pull it out you can tap on the settings and in here we'll see a bunch of the ones that are pre-installed with the device so we have also live messages people smart select and so on you can add these if you want to so as an example if i add a couple more there we go now when i take it out you can see we have pages right here and i can swipe through them so i can access more now additionally i believe if you are logged in into the samsung uh, account you can access the uh, Galaxy Store and from there download additional ones. I know that at least before you could download them, though before we had a button for it somewhere here to actually just look for them uh, in the store. I don't see that button right here. Uh, if I tap on the uh, right here on the three dots, it still gives me no options. So yeah, uh, I don't know if they completely removed the accessibility to them from from the Galaxy Store or if you just need to be logged in. Uh, in any case, uh, Galaxy Store had more, some of them were good. Uh, the good ones usually cost it like a buck or two bucks, so keep that in mind if that's still a thing. Anyway, moving on to the next option is going to be the, uh, uh, the what is it, uh, the dark mode, which you can quickly toggle on right here, I believe, through the, yep, there we go, through the notifications. So you tap on it, it changes the device obviously to dark mode. Now this is using a AMOLED display, so any kind of like black color, like I mean absolutely black right here, is completely turning off the lighting of the pixels, so that also gives you a little bit of a battery boost, but not by much. And this dark mode, dark theme, extends to default applications as you can see. So there we go, basically everything is now in this dark mode. Now I'm gonna go back to the light one just because I think it looks a little bit better in and the recording uh, but before i do i'm gonna show you one additional thing you can do with the dark mode so when you hold it it takes you quickly to the settings and in here you have the option to set it up as a schedule so as you can see you have a sunset to sunrise which means uh, right now during the daytime it will be in light mode and once it gets dark it will switch to uh, dark mode giving you what i'd consider best of both worlds now moving on to the next uh, thing which is actually still in the display section it is the high refresh rate so when we scroll down right here we should find oh, there we go motion smoothness that's how it's called right here so we have a couple options we have the standard and we have the uh, high which is high refresh rate now one thing that i do have to give props to samsung is for including the uh, animations right here to show you how it affects the display now this difference right here is quite exaggerated uh, but Obviously, it is kind of how it's going to affect it, just in a less visible manner. So, a uh, high refresh rate, uh, basically to explain this for people that don't know what this is, uh, 100 hertz means that you're getting 100 frames in a single second. So, imagine this as a slideshow. The more slides uh, in between you add, the smoother something looks like. Um, so, this is basically the same thing. 60 frames, uh, so you get only 60 frames per second, and when you bump it up, you get twice as many. So uh, things look much smoother than they did with a 60 and I can it does uh, show a little bit on even on the well on the camera even though I'm recording at 60 so when I'm scrolling up and down you can see it looks a little bit more choppy uh, obviously my pen is moving way sooner uh, than the actual display underneath and when I actually change the refresh rate to be high you can see that the video becomes like uh, the scrolling motion becomes much smoother and uh, it looks like uh, the actual content is keeping up with the pen a little bit better hopefully that, uh, that is picked up by the 
I'm with the camera. So there we go. Uh, now to go into this we have by default 120 hertz enabled so you can keep that if you want to. Uh, for everybody else that wants to have a better battery life which does uh, it has an effect like that uh, go back to 60 hertz which will give you the chappier experience but a significantly better battery life uh, unfortunately there is no smart option which incorporates both of them that's a little bit of a uh, misstep right here I, I think every device using high refresh rate should have that just to preserve battery when it doesn't need to run at 120 hertz so Moving on to the next thing, which again is actually in the display section, it is the screen mode right over here. Um, default, Samsung always puts vivid. Uh, for the most part, it looks okay, uh, though it has, there we go, examples where it just looks ridiculous. Uh, this uh, coloring uh, gives me basically headache uh, from the intensity of the colors. They're looking like they're literally glowing and uh, I would feel like I might get radiation poisoning from interacting with this. So I prefer m myself to have it on natural, which, uh, which tones down the color a little bit. In certain cases, it might look a little bit worse um, in terms of like, visual appeal. As an example, the Aurora Bo Borales is one of them. As you can see when flipping between them. Uh, this one looks toned down, a little bit more muted, while the Vivid obviously has the colors pop a little bit more, making it look maybe more pleasing. Uh, but then, like I said, images like this, uh, this is just too much. So yeah, uh, I prefer this, and obviously if you feel like some of the colors are a little bit overdone, uh, I recommend you to switch it as well. Now, moving on to the next thing. Uh, it's going to be the gesture navigation. Now, for some reason, I think the tablet actually doesn't include them uh, by default. So you need to go into the settings, display, and change it yourself. So again, display and navigation bar. And you can just top it right here. Swipe gestures. It gives you this bar at the bottom. And there we go. Now, if you never used gestures before, uh, the way you use them is you swipe up to go home. You swipe up and hold to go to recent and swipe from either side to go back. As you can see quite simple uh, it moves the apps a little bit lower uh, also giving a little bit more uh, screen real estate so highly recommend works really nicely obviously I'm using pen but it can also do that with your finger it changes literally nothing okay now moving on to the next thing uh, this is going to be more for uh, I guess productivity uh, it's going to be the decks so if you never use the decks uh, you can enable it on tablets without actually needing to connect to any external display. So we can just start. It boots into DeX and gives you what I'd consider a desktop mode. So there we go. I can see we have uh, kind of like a start button where we have all the applications. We have a couple apps right here that we can access. Those do change depending on how you use them. Actually, they, I think those are all the open apps. So we have eight apps open and here we have a little bit less than eight. So I think those are all the open apps so we can open them up. Now obviously when you open them up, they open up in this kind of window. You can resize it if you want to. And you can have multiple, as you can see. Come on, there we go. So there we go. Now we can obviously full screen it if you want to right over here and it keeps staying it stays in this kind of like desktop mode so that's nice and there we go uh, you have all the access right here to different things capture we have volume we have screenshot we have notifications and there we go and then we have our toggles right over here and our calendar which i already turned on so as you can see it basically works like a desktop mode. Additionally, if you want to, you can plug this in using uh, like a dongle and connect it to your monitor. So as an example, I'm going to grab one right now. If I can find it. There we go. So I have something like this. And using this, uh, obviously you have Type-C port. And then right here, I have the HDMI. So it allows me to literally connect uh, external display like a normal one that you do with a computer and again use the de decks on there or I could just use a normal one 
allows you to stream content to your, uh, as an example, TV if you want to, uh, to a big screen. So that's also nice uh, usage there. And additionally, with something like this, as you can see, I have also USB ports on here. So I can connect things like a mouse to it, this one, and a keyboard, and literally use it like it's virtually a computer. So that's nice. Now, this might work a little bit better with phones itself, like obviously Samsung phones, because uh, that's where DeX, DeX is only for Samsung. Um, because you can basically like plug in a phone to a dock and have everything connected to the dock and quickly access it. And with the phone, when you use the rotangle like this or anything that, once the phone detects a HDMI input, it automatically switches to this kind of mode. So that's nice. Uh, but for everybody else, uh, when using tablets, you can enable this at any moment and utilize it. So anyway, let's close this off by finding the toggle. There we go, tapping on it and it will exit DEX. And a last thing that I wanted to show, which I actually won't be able to show in action, is the option to use this as a secondary screen. So this kind of goes the other way around. Instead of using this as a computer, you allow the computer to use this as an additional screen. And you do this by simply pulling down your notification and finding the little toggle, which looks to be, where is it? There we go, second screen. You tap on it, it gives you a guide how to access it. So on Windows, you press Windows key plus K and it will open up that uh, side panel on Windows 10. Obviously you need Windows 10 for this. And from there, you can connect to your uh, tablet and basically stream uh, wirelessly to it uh, as like a second monitor. Now, obviously, because you're streaming to this uh, over the Wi-Fi, it won't work as smoothly as what you might expect from a normal wired monitor. But still, the ability for you to utilize this as a second monitor is really nice. Now, for me, like I mentioned, I can't do this. I think the computer that I'm using is just too old and does not support it. That is a uh, third gen i5, so I'm expecting that that might be the limitation here. Uh, but I assume any kind of newer device, computer, should be able to utilize this without any problem, so it should be working just fine. Anyway, this basically concludes the different things I want to show you here, tweaks, tricks, however you want to call it. And if you found this very helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and thanks for watching. Thank you.